Hey guys, I've got some new artwork for you today. This is another one I did in Procreate. Um, I started with some really loose sketching and eventually went to a value sketch and then added colors. And this whole thing took me about two and a half hours, maybe three hours. So I thought it'd be cool to show you guys. I intentionally have been practicing only with the round brush and the, the soft, the hard edge round brush and the soft round brush. Um, to kind of keep things simple and narrow my focus in Procreate so I can just focus on uh, my fundamentals and see if I can challenge myself to achieve the look I want just with one brush so I'm not getting too lost in the brush library and trying to find the right brush to achieve certain textures. I think it's a really good practice that I would suggest you guys do as well to just simplify things try and achieve everything in your image just with the round brush i think it helps you uh, be more resourceful and you know solve problems without relying on brushes or thinking that a brush can just solve the problem for you so i highly recommend using this brush i know i'm going to use this brush only for my next several images i make in procreate because i really enjoy uh, the, the practice and so yeah I, I highly recommend it for you guys too so um, I hope you like this uh, and thank you as always for all my subscribers uh, please consider subscribing if you're not already and uh, yeah hope you guys like this let's go so I decided to include these little sketches because this is where the this is where the first really rough line drawing for this artwork came from these sketches were done a while back when I got from, back from Scotland and they're inspired by those little kind of white cottages you'd see in the middle of the Scottish Highlands and there were some local artists there in, in Isle of Skye and Glencoe that did these amazing landscape paintings that would always feature these little white cottages and I really, I really, really loved the, the kind of feel of them. They felt old and used but well maintained almost it, they were just really interesting and so i just felt like sketching them and coming up with maybe some of my own and i thought maybe they would inspire some designs but i ended up drawing i didn't end up picking one of those for this image but i ended up picking a sketch that was included in the spread that was kind of just inspired by some of the shapes but i injected some of my own personal um, shape language from my personal ip into it and so i decided it would be a fun sketch to kind of push uh, and work on for a couple hours and see how far i could push it with just the round brush so i used the hard edge round brush and the soft soft edge kind of airbrush and those are the only two brushes I use for this whole thing. So what, so you can see what I'm doing here is I'm just laying in, I'm laying in some values under this really loose sketch and establishing some dark shapes and light shapes. And I'm also thinking about the relationship of big shapes versus medium and small shapes. And I, I added these little details, like some there's some chimney details and little tower details that I, I was looking at. Um, I was just on Pinterest and I have a board with a bunch of cool architecture details that I like. And so often when I'm doing stuff like this, I'm just browsing through my board and f finding little details I like and seeing, seeing if I get any ideas for, for how I could incorporate those similar details into any design that I'm doing. And so those little chimneys you see uh, were something that were inspired by something I saw in that board. And right now I'm just trying to do, I'm trying to establish a, a plan for the image uh, so that when I go to add colors, it, it's it's pretty established and all I have to think about is the colors and I want to establish the values and get all that knocked in and I want to establish the 
the design of the building and its major details so that when I do colors, I don't have to think about that stuff. So I decided to go with a black, or not black, but a dark background. Um, Cause I want the building to feel like it's in light. And so in terms of reference, I didn't actually have a reference for colors here. And that's not on purpose. I should have had a reference, but I just kind of ended up painting and trying stuff. And I found myself, um, I almost just forgot to get a reference. I was just, it started out with just me trying some colors and stuff. And then, uh, I was really far into the process and almost done by the time I realized. And I just decided to, um, see what I could pull off just out of my head. But I don't recommend that if you're, if you're trying to learn and you're trying to strengthen your fundamentals, I recommend using reference or at least having a plan for your colors going in. So something I'm thinking about too with this is, um, I always think about when I'm doing a black and white composition, I always think about my light shapes and my dark shapes and which of those is more dominant in the scene. And one of them should always be more dominant. And you want to, you want to decide that before you move to colors, you want to, and it's not necessarily even about values. It's literally just broadly about dark shapes and light shapes. Where are the dark shapes? Where are the light shapes? And you can actually do some abstract kind of plan sketch where you just block in where you want the dark value groups to be and the light value groups. And you can create really interesting shapes. And then you can kind of build your composition based on that plan just in those two values, dark and light. Don't think about mid-tones or anything. And make sure that one is more dominant than the other. You could, this, this image could be flipped where all the dark shapes you see could be actually the light shapes. And it would just, it would take on a different feel and a completely different structure, but it would still work. So that's something to think about in, and think about it in those really simple terms when you're making, when you're planning your composition, I find it really helps. And, and just do these things one step at a time. So you can do your line drawing. Then when you're going to make an image, uh, like when you're going to make the composition, then think about those dark and light shapes and where, where they're going to be and kind of how much space they're going to occupy. Then move to this kind of value study where you start grouping, you start adding in the value, correct values for your image in those areas, the dark values can be grouped in the dark shapes and the light values in the light shapes and they can just live there and you can you can push and pull the values in the dark shapes and the light shapes but maintain that overall structure and really strong read and then once your values are done you can think about colors and then working in step by step this way it makes it far less likely that you are going to fail in the end because if you're sure that every step is working then you you don't end up at the end with a bad image and you don't know what happened it's kind of you you do it step by step and you make sure not to move forward until you're until everything is working in that current step so i'm adding some colors with I think I used the gradient map tool and the color balance. And, and then I just started directly painting. And again, I didn't have reference for these colors. I just, I was just testing out. I don't usually use the color adjustment tools in Procreate, but I wanted to test them out and I want to try and figure out how to use them properly. So this was a good experiment. And I'm just still just using the round brush for this entire image and trying to constantly remind myself to keep things simple and stay zoomed out and not get lost in tiny little details. I want the whole image to kind of 
elevate at the same time. And so I'm working kind of on the whole image at the same time and just trying to keep things loose. And if you work that way, just with the mindset of keeping things loose and simple, your image will just kind of build up and build up and your details will come naturally. Uh, if you just approach things in a loose and um, simple way. It's kind of hard to explain, but you can ruin an image by getting in tight and trying to create details. If your mindset is, okay, now I'm gonna go create the details, that alone can, can result in a lot of tight kind of, uh, tight and stiff areas that are over rendered and don't match the, the flow of the, the rest of the image and the quality of the marks is just never the same. And that's where people run into um, having their final image just kind of lose that nice spontaneous quality that the sketch had. So my, my solution to that is, or what I find helps with that is, uh, always having the mindset that I'm just sketching and keeping things loose and always, always over and over in my head telling myself to simplify things and simple is always better uh, in my opinion. So yeah, now I'm just uh, going over, covering some of the artifacts created by the round brush overlapping itself. It can create this kind of semi-opaque artifact effect uh, which I'm, I was just softening out and um, working some of the edges to make sure that yeah, it looks okay. And then I used the soft brush to add some of those lighting effects. So there it is. This image took a couple hours. Uh, I think it was like two and a half hours and with the round brush only. So um, it was a really good exercise and I recommend you guys learning Procreate to just try and do a bunch of images just with the round brush. I think it really, uh, it's a great way to learn the software and without having to get lost in the brush libraries. So yeah. So that's it for this one guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's a little bit shorter, a little bit more of a, a quick kind of mood sketch. Um, and yeah, it was really fun practicing this way with just the round brush kind of kept me focused and helped me simplify things. And, you know, it's, it's nice not being overwhelmed by so many brushes to choose from. So I highly recommend you guys do this, especially since everyone's always asking me, uh, what brushes they should use. This is the one that I would suggest you use until you feel really, really comfortable and your fundamentals are strong. I mean, you can't go wrong with just using this brush and having to create all your textures and all your shapes and your materials and edges using this one brush. It's really great practice to uh, make you more kind of mindful and resourceful without feeling like you have to rely on custom brushes. So definitely try this. I know I'm going to do my next several uh images using the round brush just because i it feels really good to practice this way um so yeah i hope you guys like this video thank you as always for all my subscribers and all your support please continue to give me feedback in the comments it, it really helps me out a lot and if you haven't already please consider subscribing if uh, you like my videos so yeah thanks guys and i will see you in the next one bye